This video considers the opening section of Rossini's Barber of Seville Overture. Like many opera overtures that Rossini wrote and even some that Mozart wrote, this particular piece is in a modified type of sonata. Specifically, it opens with a slow introduction, which is then followed by a fast exposition and a fast recapitulation. Instead of having a traditional development section between the exposition and recapitulation, this piece instead opts for a very short link that serves as a means of modulating from the secondary key back to the tonic key. This video in particular, though, considers the slow introduction labeled Andante Maestoso in the score. Scrolling through the score, we can see that the tempo changes here at measure 25 to Allegro Vivace. This is the start of the exposition of this piece. So for this video, we'll be concentrating on the first 24 bars. The introduction starts in E major, whereas the exposition kicks off in E minor. So there's a modal shift that takes place between the slow introduction and the exposition. That's kind of interesting. This particular slow introduction starts with a call to attention, very similar to the one that we saw in Haydn's London Symphony. So we have these big block chords that grab the audience's attention. It's interesting that we actually get that a couple times, right? We have this extended idea here, a repetition of that idea here, and then a longer idea that leads to a cadence on the downbeat of measure 11. It's perfect authentic cadence here. So you can see this opening phrase is an extended sentence with a basic idea starting in pickups to measure one, the second basic idea starting in the middle of measure three, the continuation beginning on the downbeat of measure six. So it's kind of interesting that these basic ideas are two and a half measures a piece, which is how we get to five. It's a little bit of an unusual grouping, but it, it works for this piece. We'll see throughout this movement that there are many sentences. So after that opening back and forth between these block fortissimo chords and this softer iteration of this ascending scale, we move on to something that sounds more like a true melody, right? The oboe comes in in measure 11. Interestingly, this middle section is also in sentence structure. So we have a basic idea that begins here in measure 11. Another basic idea halfway through measure 12. Continuation picks up halfway through the next measure. And then we continue that all the way to the perfect authentic cadence on the downbeat of measure 17. Notice how on the downbeat of measure 17, this material comes directly from the very beginning of the slow introduction, minus those big fortissimo chords. So it seems like this slow introduction is in a loose ternary structure. So we have this opening idea here at the beginning, which I'm going to call arbitrarily letter A the more melodic section in the middle, which I'm gonna call B, and then a return to something that's like A, but not exactly like A. So I'm gonna call this A prime starting in measure 17. At this point, we're starting to build a little bit of tension. We start very, very softly, but notice how the contour rises and the back and forth between the very soft piano with these explosions and forte is quite dramatic in this section. Another thing that's quite fascinating, actually, especially knowing that we're about to shift from a major mode slow introduction to the minor mode exposition, is a little bit of the mode mixture that comes into play. Now, the exact location of the mode mixture differs from recording. Like a lot of operas, this particular piece exists in a bunch of different versions, partially because a lot of these pieces were constantly being revised through their first few performances. So you'll hear slightly different qualities in different recordings. For example, in measures four and five, some of them do play the F double sharp, some of them play just a regular F sharp. And similarly, here at the bottom of the page in measure 21, some of them include mixture a little bit earlier than what we have here. But just to point out a couple of examples, at the end of measure 20, we're on an E major chord. One chord. Oh, we've got that neighboring 565, five, but then it goes right back to a major one chord. But by the end of this page, notice that we start getting G natural. So G natural start intruding, so we have a, an E minor chord collapsing to the tonic minor. And then that self corrects back to major in a couple spots. Notice again the collapse to E minor here for that tonic one chord. 
And another thing that's very typical, we end on a dominant harmony. So notice that it's really both of these measures are on a dominant triad there, confirming the end of the slow introduction with a half cadence. So points to remember for this slow introduction. We start with a typical call to attention. We have a sentence here in the opening phrase. The middle contrasting phrase is also in sentence structure. We return to the opening idea with a few adjustments. Namely, we don't have those attention getting block chords at the beginning anymore. And the ending is quite different. We start introducing modal mixture here. And then by the end, the slow introduction rests on a half cadence. Again, heightening anticipation for the arrival of the exposition.